Twins Productions. I don't know why I love you. Woo! Come on. Big city of dreams, my apples green, in the land of the schemes, live well by my means, wish you seen what I've seen, Harlem deep lean, diamond district sheen, garment district, got it sewn like a scene, on the ave with the biscuits, serving the fiends, home on the range, four seasons I change, it's all a game, it's all for the game, creep bags under my eyes, my city don't sleep, four deuce and I'm loose on these Harlem streets, Brooklyn's in the house, plus I'm taking your queens, Dykeman's heading south for the alphabet, Creams. All in your girl's mouth, I hate hearing a scream. Big town in route, like a garden I see. Center the world, we got what you need. We racing, you chasing, trying to keep up speed. Good evening. Welcome to the New World Sound Show. I'm your host, Mike the Millionaire. Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to have a guest who's going to drop some knowledge about ancient American history. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the New World Sound Show. And today we are privileged to have the author of the book, I'm gonna hold it up for you, The First Americans Were Africans. And this book was written by Dr. David Imhotep. Doctor, welcome. Thank you. You hold a degree in ancient African history. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, instead of going to African American history, which is primarily about slavery, which I do not like to discuss. It's been discussed by a myriad of people, and uh, I think we know enough about that now. Of course, the, the children don't, so they need to know about it. But I uh, was, uh, quite frankly, sick, sick of it at one time because we weren't getting the whole story. So I um, wanted to, to have a degree in something that I love, and that was ancient African history, which is from Egypt backwards. Okay. Egypt was the last great uh, world's civilization. But now you yourself, I think you said you are of Native American ancestry as well? Yes, I have three, um, white, black, and Native American. The Native American were the Navajo and Arapaho. The Navajo on my mother's wow. side and Arapaho on my father's. Now, I have a book from like way back in the days called They Came Before Columbus. Uh, were you inspired by that book by Dr. Absolutely. Ivan Van Serta? Absolutely, absolutely. That, as a matter of fact, I, I stand on his shoulders. Mm. Now, yeah. how does your book differ from Dr. Ivan Van Serta's book? Uh, in a few small details, but the major one is that he shows that Africans came to America before Columbus. And what I show is that Africans came to America before the Indians. Mm. Now, I know that your book is not just your opinion because I have the book and I've read the book and it's very detailed. And your book is derived from seven peer review journal articles. Can you please explain for the viewers what exactly that means? What is a seven peer review journal article? Okay, briefly, uh, what a peer reviewed article is, it's the height of academia. It's the height of, of, of research. Um, uh, in order to become peer-reviewed in a university, you have to have uh, 10 of your peers who are in the same science review your, your uh, data, your information, your paper, your book, or whatever you're writing, and you're, it will come back with scribbles all over it. And then you'll have some circles and A-pluses or whatever. But what uh, you have to do is you have to uh, correct the, the writing and the so-called mistakes until the, uh, each peer-reviewed uh, person of the 10 group okays what you've written. Once that okays what you've written, you are peer-reviewed and you can then appear in a peer-reviewed journal. So a journal is, is uh, a, a magazine. Mm, mm. Wow. And uh, really all I needed was three. 
Um, this is what I'm told for three, but you know how uh, it is in uh, the world that we end with critics. So I have seven now and soon to be eight. Now, who is the gentleman on the cover of this book? As anyone will see in the, in, on the, the second page, okay? Uh, it talks about who this gentleman is. Who he is is he is one of the very last real beginning uh, Native Americans. Someone would, uh, someone would look at his picture, hold it steady, Someone would look at his picture and say, well, how could he be a Native American? I know, because this is going to go on YouTube, and I know people are going to, in the comment section, they're going to say that he does not look like someone who is indigenous to America. This is the thing. Most scientists agree now that Africans were the first people on the planet. And uh, they came over, according to my... My information, the peer-reviewed, is 56,000 years ago. They came over, and that was done by Nadine Guidon, who is a French anthropologist. Mm. Uh, now she has found more information and more evidence. Uh, as a matter of fact, she, she based this on peer-reviewed information that comes from her thermoluminescence dating of some stone tools found in Sierra de Capivara Park in South America, showing that these people were here 100,000 years ago. According to this book. Whoa. Can you see that title? Uh, no. Hold, okay. it, hold it steady. Uh, hold it there for a few seconds so that people can, um, the history and geography of human genes by three scientists, three genetic scientists, okay? Okay. All right, and uh, we know on CSI Miami that uh, DNA is correct. What percent of the time? 98.9 or 99.8% of the time genes are correct. Mm -hmm. So what he has on page 145 is he shows that there was no white skin and he says, this is his words, Okay, this is, a, this is a white professor, all right? Genata, geneticist, Carvella Schwarzman, by the way, is one of the most uh, world-renowned professors there. He started the, he helped start the uh, Human Genome Project, mm. all right? So he's, he's one of the best. And he says on page 145 that there was no white skin on this planet, genetically speaking, until 3000 BC. Now, they were here 100,000 years ago, or even you can even say 56,000 years ago. It really doesn't matter. The first other group, to come over would be the Asians, the Native Americans in their book, The Red Record, the Wallam Odom is their, their, the name of the Red Record, Wallam Odom. Uh, in their words, uh, they say they, they came over here around 26,000 years ago. So, uh, and we have them being um, coming on the planet a little less than uh, 3,000 uh, years BC. Now explain to the viewers what exactly is the Wallam Odom. Okay, the Wallam Olam is, is, their, is their book of their history of, of coming over here. Now, the, the whole deal is when they did come over 26,000 years ago, there was nothing but uh, Africans here in North, Central, and South America. Mm. And when their bloods come together, mm -hmm. their children become the Native Americans. Okay. And that is genetically sound. Mm. This also you talked about in your book first Americans not coming from the Bering Straits because of the ice that was there for a certain period of time. And you were talking about in your book the distance between South America and Africa, how close that is. And you talked about the trade winds for the, the viewers who don't know, uh, you know, about that particular history. Can you give them uh, a little bit of information about that and also talk about Ra One and Thor Heyerdahl? Sure. First of all, you talk about the, the distances. You'll be showing right now the map of the distances, showing how far it is from, from Australia and, and Asia to the Americas, how the distance to America from from Africa is far, far, I think it's five times shorter. Mm -hmm. 
as as a, as a, uh, um, then we're talking about your your second question was about uh, the the enter the entry into the Americas from from Asia. Well, uh, that did happen, but it probably didn't happen between 115,000 years ago and 8,000 years ago because that is according to uh, um, Dr. Lemke, who did her dissertation on that subject. Uh, we see that that area was was blocked by a mile to two mile high glacier. Mm. Okay, mm. and you you have that as well. Uh, however, the correct map I did not send you. I did. I've got about three or four maps. I sent you one that was a map that showed. Uh, it looked like someone took a a snow shovel and carved a uh, entry from Alaska all the way down to the United States, which which uh, probably did not happen. Mm. <laughs> so uh, we're talking about someone crossing a glacier, a glacier a mile to two miles high. How do you climb a glacier a mile to two miles high? Mm. And why would you want to? And if, and if you did, when you get up there, how would, your, how would your, your food, where would your food come from? We're talking about a journey of, uh, of approximately 2,000 miles. Mm. So there are no uh, plants that grow in snow. There are, the, there are no vegetarians or herbivore animals that just eat plants, uh, they wouldn't be able to survive because there's no plants. Mm. Uh, then you have uh, the carnivorous animals, they would not survive because there are no uh, herbivore uh, animal types to eat. And then you have uh, the people who come across who, who eat all three types, uh, none of those three would be there. So how would someone, first of all, climb that cliff, then how would someone come across that? That is not a logical response to, to how people came over here. Then they jump to a, a thing saying that, uh, well, they probably came across the, clo the coasts. The coasts were, were ice as well up into the ocean. So they, there was no land there to get across the coast. And we say, well, maybe they came across by boat. Now that's a possibility, but we have, we have no bones of uh, other people here until far after Clovis. And the Clovis argument, I don't even want to get into, takes too long, but the Clovis mm -hmm. argument is totally dead now, knowing that uh, there are so many people who came here far before the 9,000-some year uh, Clovis date. I have a, a lot of young viewers. Uh, explain to the viewers what exactly you mean when you talk about Clovis. Well, Clovis is an is area down in the southwest of the United States where they found some artifacts, if you will, and uh, they felt very, very comfortable in, in saying that they came from Asia in around 9,000 years, uh, nine or 10,000 years ago. And that just did not happen, them walking across, because we just covered that. They cannot walk across at that date. And even if they did, they, anyone who did come over at that date would have to, by necessity, by uh, Carvela Sports' book, you know, did I show you how thick it was? Mm. Man, that's massive. You know? Yes, 1,200 some pages of genetic scientific material. So uh, these take these other type of people, no other type of people, supposedly by the, the white scientists, say that they did not evolve until around three to uh, 3,000 BC. Any other so-called races, and there's no such thing as race, you know. There's just no such thing. There's, there, that's another show. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of books in my arsenal, particularly about Native American history. And this book, this book is, is, is the best book probably that I have uh, read on the topic. Uh, why, that's, why do you say it's the best book? I don't understand. It's one of the best books because your book, it's like everything that you're saying, you have all of the facts. It's like everything that you say, you validate. When I picked up the book, it was a book that I couldn't stop reading. It's like, you know, you pick it up and, you know, you're reading the book and then, you know, it's time to go to bed. And, you, you know, you say, oh, well, let me get 10 more minutes <laughs> reading this book, you know. And, uh, you know, there's not too many books that keep my attention like that. Explain to the viewers the connection with the Twa people or the so-called African Pygmy people and ancient America. Well, we're told they have the oldest language that is in existence today, and it is not our kind of language. 
uh, the, the original language that they spoke, and they still, some of their neighbors still have some of those that it, are the, the clicking. click language. And it's very interesting that Snoop Dogg, in one of his, in one of his, <laughs> yeah, one of his songs, yeah. Yeah, he does the same thing. So yeah. that shows you there's some type of genetic memory going on there. Mm. So uh, the ta the twa and the anu were short. They were three and a half to four and a half feet tall. And they were as 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 we as we read, they were the first Homo sapiens, small. But everything started small. I mean, a the first dinosaur was a lizard. Mm. Everything starts small. Everything goes from the the subatomic particles to the atomic particles, and then it goes into um, uh, atoms, and which uh, which put together put form molecules, and molecules form different things, different organs, or skin, and bones, and uh, and and everything starts out small. The first dinosaur was not gigantic; it was small. It was a lizard, like it's the size of a mouse, but mm. thinner. You know, you mm -hmm. don't have lizards are today. So, mm. this is how we all first started. And now. In your book, you talk about how the twa had something to do with the construction of the mounds. Yes, well, we see um, we see the mounds in their area in Africa, in um, in northern Africa. You see mounds in the so-called Sahara. Uh, you see mounds. You, you see them in up, uh, later mounds up in France and Germany and England has a lot of mounds. Then you see mounds up in um, a little later in Scandinavia, and then. You go over into Canada, you see mounds that, that are a little older than, than the ones that are in the United States. So you can see the progression of mounds all the way from Africa up into Europe and then around into the Americas, North Americas, and down. Mm. And wow. you, you'll be showing probably about now a map of all of the mounds that uh, were, were found in the Americas. And uh, where they, where the majority of them were. Yeah, uh, we're gonna take a little quick break, and we will show that picture. We'll be back in a couple of seconds. Uh, what kind of proof do you have that there were Egyptians in the Americas? Okay, I was taught to use the word evidence. Evidence, because, okay. Um, Proof, uh, facts, and and and, uh, and proof to, uh, uh, change. Mm. It, it's it's true, and there is proof, and it's a fact that it rained yesterday at this time. Mm -hmm. But the facts and proof, and uh, uh, today is it's not raining. So mm -hmm. you can see proof and facts and uh, and those type of things change, but evidence never changes. Beautiful, right? What evidence do you have that ah. there were Egyptians? in the Americas, because you know we're gonna get it, we're gonna right. catch flack. Well, there's no problem. We know, we know uh, around the world there are pyramids, and we know that only uh, Africans made pyramids. We, they made mounds, and they made pyramids, okay? And uh, there are pyramids not only in Egypt, there are pyramids in other parts of Africa, okay? There's a pyramid or two in Italy, there are pyramids in, um, in China, southern, south, uh, western China, okay? There are pyramids in Bosnia. Um, there's a small pyramid in Greece. Um, northern Rome in the, in the, I'm sorry, northern Italy in the, uh, uh, just before you get to the mountains, you'll see uh, a couple pyramids. Um, and in South America, there are still pyramids. In North America, they've been mostly um, destroyed, but there are some earthen mounds still in, in North America. And we know, and everyone knows, that they identify pyramids with, with black people. So pyramids were, and also the temples. We see the temples all over South, uh, um, Mesoamerica or, or Central America and South America. And North America, they've been, uh, they've been destroyed. The pictures of the the people in, especially in Belize, when I went in Belize, this will be in my, my new edition, um, we'll see that uh, there's a gigantic picture of face of, uh, of an African. And there's no doubt who built these things, especially from the date, from the dates of them. So there's pyramids all over and those, and then we get to something that we can all see now. 
I have a uh, tour going out. It's going to be called Egypt and the Bahamas, where I show some artifacts and some structures from, from Egypt. from the Nile Valley that are still able to be seen off of the coast of Bimini and in Nassau, but mostly off the coast of Bimini. Uh, it's a, a long 600 yard long pier and a uh, 600 yard long breakwater uh, that is protecting the pier. And we'll see near there uh, uh, buildings that have been knocked down. Um, and those are a little farther out in uh, 90 feet of water, but they're, uh, they, they seem to be dated at 21,000 years ago. And then we get closer to the uh, shallow waters and we see a building that was knocked down. We see the apex, the, the part of the roof. We see columns, you know, where, which started in, in, in Egypt, of course. And uh, then if we go around to NASA side, we see a sphinx. And the sphinx has been dated to around 2500 B.C. And uh, you, you understand that uh, 2500 B.C., um, this had to be an Egyptian sphinx uh, because that's a religious symbol and the Assyrians and um, the other people who came, the Greeks, Romans, uh, Persians who came down and invaded um, uh, Egypt were not into those type of things. As a matter of fact, Napoleon tried to blow the face off of the sphinx. So that was not a religious icon of those type of people. It was only a religious icon of Egyptians. So this is why we seem to... Uh, think if it goes back that far and uh, and it's a religious symbol of Egyptians and it's a logical conclusion that it, the, the people who built this pier in breakwater probably were African. Mm -hmm. The date of it also goes goes back and it had to build it before it's in 20 to 30 feet of water right now so it had to be built before the Ice Age ended 3000 to 8000 BC. What we're going to do right now, we're going to take a break, and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back here with our guest, Dr. David Imhotep. Now you do tours. Well, this will answer the people who said Egyptians in America. That's crazy. Well, um, and I was speaking about, and you saw um, the picture of this long pier and this 600 yard long pier and 600 yard long breakwater that protects the pier, which is under 30 feet of water in the Bahamas. And as I said, that makes that pier would have to be between eight and 11,000 years old because that's when the water was, was rising and flooding. And the what water? That is the water from the last ice age as it was melting. The pier in the breakwater we can see, since it's that old, it means it predated all of the other so-called races and would have to be built by Africans. We also are going to have a, a glass bottom boat that will take people out there to look at the this uh, pier and breakwater and the other structures that are underneath the water and the, the pier pillars and and the roof that, that fell down and possibly a the remnants of an ancient obelisk, an Egyptian obelisk, and some other things that we haven't even uh, found yet, but they'll be available for people to see through the glass bottom boat. And others who want to jump over and uh, and swim to it and, and look at it, uh, scuba diving or, or, or whatever, you can see that. And uh, this will, the first one will be uh, happening hopefully this, this uh, winter, but we will have them several times a year. And it will be called Egypt in, in the Bahamas is the name of the tour. Oh, wow. That, that sounds great. Do you have a website where people can buy your book? Yes, I do. They can go to historic, H-I-S-T-O-R-I-C, historic truth. Dot info, I-N-F-O, historictruth.info, and they can buy my book. And in a few, in a couple months, 
probably by October um, or September, October, we'll be we'll have the information about signing up for the tour. Okay, this is not the last time we're going to have you on the show because, like I said, there's so much material in this book to cover, and we've only just scratched the surface. Okay? Thank you, and it's it's not me. It's all about the ancestors and the people who came before us. Thank you, Dr. Imhotep. We'll be right back. And this was mind blowing. This was <laughs> this is one of the best shows that we have done, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back next month. Good night. Big city of dreams, my apples green in the land of the schemes. Live well above my means. Wish you seen what I've seen. Harlem deep lean, diamond district sheen. Garment district got it sewn like a scene on the Ave with the biscuits serving the fiends. Home on the range, four seasons I change. It's all a game, it's all for the game. Creep bags under my eyes, my city don't sleep. Four deuce and I'm loose on these Harlem streets. Brooklyn's in the house, plus I'm taking your queens. Dyke men's heading south for the alphabet creams. All in your girl's mouth, I hate hearing a scream. Big town in route, like a garden I see. Center the world, we got what you need. We racing, you chasing, trying to keep up speed. New York, New York, where I walk, my walk and talk, my talk. Trying to avoid getting caught by pop. Tried and caught, or knocked off. Sketch our line and chalk. City life's a plus for projects for the five ports. In the New York minute, it be your last thought. A dollar in the dream is what your ass cost. Bought or sold, ask Adam, the apple's cold. Where the streets is paved with gold. The yellow brick road, respect the G code. Two and two be the area, yo. Home of schizos, the clip. Those plots and pitfalls, blocks with pit bulls. The streets is blissful, full of pistols, coke, dope, frills, and pills, pot and crystal. The city will eat you alive. Do you want it to list you? Don't make it an issue. Triple M, man, I see official. Scandalous transactions, 
It be Manhattan, the capital of the planet where it all happened. Scandalous transactions. It be Manhattan, the capital of the planet where it all happened. New York, New York, my city so nice. You named it twice. Where the